Uh, five nine J. Uh, uh, let me speak my mind up. Uh, uh, it's just me keeping it real. Uh huh. Keeping it one hundred. Let's go. Yeah. Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Now, I said before I was always going to stay away from, you know, politics per se. A lot of my subscribers, I've noticed, have been divided. You know, Democrats, Republicans, they're always trying to bait me in to question what side I'm on, who I believe in, who I'm going to vote for, and I always be like, I don't know, bro. I, just, I don't really open that discussion or open that debate for people. I think it's an important one. I was going to do two videos, three videos. I had a Mexican Mafia video about Bakersfield I'm going to drop. Then some stuff that happened at Salinas Valley, a two-on-one with Norteños. And then uh, Southerners got hurt in the process. And then a Zapatista video. And then I seen this morning that what happened with Trump at the rally in Pennsylvania. I wanted to share a conversation with you guys that I had. Because like I said, I don't really get into politics. But it's very unfortunate that you know somebody tried to take him out. The shooter was apprehended, lost his life. They are, there's even footage all over social media of them dragging him. And so pretty much he's deceased. He's, t he's terminated. He's finito. They slimed him out. There's a lot of things that kind of trip me out a little bit. Like, for example, like active shooters, man, people panic. People run. He could have let off multiple shots. And he was from a different building, a far distance building. So you only hear a couple of shots, and then you hear the sick... Then you see the Secret Service escort him off. All I heard was a couple of shots and then the, the commotion, Secret Service moving Donald Trump, Donald Trump doing some thugged out gangster stuff, like throwing his hands in the air like they didn't get me. His reaction was crazy. You know, he turned to the right. If he would have been facing forward, he could have got hit in the face, but he turned to the right and he got grazed. But then, you know, I, I, I believe in conspiracies too and coincidences and stuff like that. Like, I'm really into it. I play with my own head and, and entertain these ideas. But first, I want to say this. It's crazy that people are resorting to this kind of nature, this kind of level of violence to offset, you know, the political campaign, the political fight, the political vote, you know, to offset the sides to favor one side to win. Now, mind you, you know, we know liberals are trying to ban all guns, but I'm pretty sure they were pretty happy that somebody tried to take this man out, even though it didn't work out. And they probably got disappointed in the end. Kind of makes you think, you know, the American people are going to believe a certain aspect about this like is this what the liberals you know the democrats is this how they're willing to resort their win to secure their win because we've seen it before in american history you know there's been multiple presidents that have been shot at or shot down you know jfk was a big thing for years so the cia finally leaked the information that yeah the government has something to do with that they, the government didn't want you know, John F. Kennedy in the office. And then they retracted that document after they released it publicly for a little bit. Then Robert Kennedy spoke about it for a little bit. Now he's not saying too much about it. You know, Lincoln got shot. You know, JFK got shot. Like, nobody's untouchable. Nobody's bulletproof. And from what I've been seeing the last past maybe six or eight months, I've seen a big division, mostly all over social media, because that's where I interact with people, about this upcoming election. People are so passionate about Biden re-winning. Even after he's done everything in the public's eye, you know, you can't blame his health, you know, his condition, if he's a little slow, if he's, you know, absent-minded at certain points. You got to judge the man on his actions in accordance to what he's done for the American people, the American government, the American economy, as a world leadership. You got to base it on that, not just because of things he does on social media like he forgets his words he messes up his speeches can't read the teleprompter right always seems like he's you know winded a little bit or you know he's exhausted you know everybody gets old and you know what I means the body's gonna have an adverse effect on your way of thinking and how you conduct yourself on a daily basis so sometimes you know i can make fun of certain things he does and certain things he says but at the end of the day you got to judge the man on what he's done while he sat in that white house I don't really know too much because I don't even really know what aspects to look at and look for because some people can cut and paste things and make it seem like Trump's economy, man, there was no toilet paper. But Biden's economy, man, the grocery stores are stacked. Oh, but the grocery stores are stacked, but it's because everything's so pricey. But when Trump was, you know, you can go back and forth with every little aspect, but people are raised in a certain culture or within family traditions or certain belief systems that they're going to vote for whoever they're going to vote for. 
I just hope that it's not resorting to this kind of nature where they're like, man, we can't beat them publicly. We can't beat them on the podium behind any platform. We can't beat them in the rallies. We can't beat them in the numbers and the polls. Hey, John F. Kennedy was a prime example how to get rid of a problem, right? Let's go that way. Kind of doubt it. But like I said, um, conspiracies, I'm really into conspiracies. And I just find it coincidental that they've been having a hard time shutting this man down. You know, trying to get him charges, you know, 50 some guilty verdict charges or whatever he got faced with. Could be facing time. They made that man a felon publicly and a felon can still vote. They've done everything they can to crucify this man. But here's a trip, right? In this rally, right? People panic. And everybody behind Trump, I don't know if there's a like a plastic platform that protects them from getting shot. But they just kind of kneeled down and just looked around. Now, mind you, I thought maybe you hear gunshots, everybody's going to scatter, like just run, like roaches, just whew. Like, I'm not trying to be around and stand around for any kind of firepower that's coming out my direction or within the vicinity or within 10 miles. I don't want to be a part of it. So I seen everybody get down. So I, I, I read a couple of comments. Some people were like, man, this had to be scripted. Well, if you look at the injury right here, barely got nicked in the ear, a little bit of blood, not too much. I can so now I see what side is willing to draft up a story, ah, oh, bro. It's staged to make himself look good, like he's a survivor, this and this and that. Then you can have the other side, like man, this is the liberals and the Democrats' way of trying to get rid of a problem that they can't beat. You know, a win's a win. So now you're gonna, I'm gonna watch the people become even more divided because of this situation. They were already divided in the first place. I'm gonna tell you about a conversation I had now. I had a boss, supervisor, and um, he was a Trump supporter, man. Like, every, like he fresh out of the Marines or the Army, I believe it was. Man, he loved Trump. He hated this Biden administration. He couldn't stand it. So he was always talking about it. So every once in a while, I would see, I'd shoot him something, like, funny about Biden. I'm like, here, fool. You know, to get him to, like, to rile him up a little bit. And he, say, he, had, he, had a lot of talk, he had a lot to say, to be honest with you. We talked about a lot. And in that movie, The Civil War came out. If you guys haven't seen it, it's a pretty good movie. You know, you got California and Texas going after, you know, the government on the East Coast, going after the White House and all this and this and that. Pretty much, run America's going to undergo a civil war again. And I told them, I'd be bad, bro. Like, maybe that's what this country needs. Let out a little aggression. Politics kind of took over everybody. You know, we can vote anybody in that office, but they're not going to particularly be for the best interest of the people anyways. They easy go in there and just apply their own agenda and fulfill their own agenda. And, you know, the American people suffer the most. The American people are the ones struggling check to check. There's American people that can't even afford groceries. What used to be $150, you know, a couple years ago, you buy those same items that cost you 150 bucks to fill up your grocery cart. Now you got $450 worth of, worth of groceries you had to spend on. You know, I, I, I watch it a lot. You know, I just get both sides, both perspectives, but in reality it's because I'm not into the whole voting and political campaign and who I'm going to vote for president or I need to pick a party. You know, I'm all about like, man, I just want to hear what people are going through and people's perceptions and their belief system. So I go back and forth. So we're watching, I watched the Civil War movie, but we only watched the trailer back then. That's all what was available. And I remember him saying it on Night Shift. He was like, look, bro, if Trump doesn't get voted as president, he goes, I can almost guarantee you that movie's going to happen. I'm like, seriously? And he was like, yeah, bro. If, if Trump doesn't win, bro, then this election was rigged. And the people in the United States are going to see that it was rigged. They're going to see how corrupt this government really is. How they don't want to relinquish their power. How they don't want to give it to somebody that they voted for. Since, you know, all these conspiracies about, you know, the, the votes are wrong. The votes were rigged. The numbers weren't right. So many conspiracies get thrown out there. And he said, if Trump, being that everybody loves this man and wants to see this man voted in and wants this man back after seeing what Biden has done with his presidency, he goes, I guarantee you, if Trump doesn't win, we're going to have a civil war. A lot of people are going to go at it. He goes, why do you think California and the Texas were the basis of, of this movie, the concept of the movie as the two states that are willing to go against the government? So, you know, I'm very uneducated when it comes to politics and how everything works, political campaigns, belief systems from both sides. I'm very unfamiliar with it. I try to learn little by little, but it takes time to learn that kind of stuff. So he's telling me all this stuff and I'm looking at him like, for one, you sound convincing as hell. 
you sound real believable and you sound real convincing to yourself. Like, that's really going to happen. So he had me for a little while just sitting there like, damn, what do I got to do? Do I got to get like survival kits and backpacks and axes and learn how to make uh, fire with sticks or what? What am I supposed to do? Do I got to buy a generator because my power is going to go out? Like all this, you know, he, he really stands on that. And there's a part of me that believes him. Now, like I said, I believe anybody that can really convince me. If you can get in my head and really convince me about your belief systems, no, I'm not going to support your belief system, but I'll just really think about it like, wow, that's true. Then this happens. Now, I've never followed no presidency, the whole election, the, the debates, both sides, because I was locked up for a very long time. I'm barely getting into it. So I never understood what president has done what for the country. I've never been analytical about what the economy looked like during the presidency, the voting process. The division between the people but i have done recently since i've been out between biden and trump and dude it's like you can see a lot of hate resentment bitterness and like it just you, it looks like there's gonna be a big uproar to me you can look at it all over social media how people really you know justify their justifications as to why they're gonna vote for this side or this side and it's extremely divided so when he told me that i sat there for a long time and i still think it you know, if he doesn't get presidency, man, uh, the American people are going to get pissed off. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be pissed off. But I can also say the same thing. Trump gets president. A lot of Democratic believers and parties and, and everybody that are Democrats are going to be pissed off that he won. For some reason, there's just a lot of anger and rage when it comes to this upcoming presidency. And I don't understand. You know, as a people, I thought we were all supposed to be for each other and the government was supposed to be for the people. But the government has utilized the people to be divided for their own benefits so one party can always have absolute power over the country. And that's why I don't really get too involved in it, man. It's a scary aspect to see because in reality, we vote these people in, bro, and they just do what they want to do. They do what they want to do for themselves and just get on a public platform and say, hey, it's for you guys. It's for you guys. I did this for you guys. But no matter what presidency goes up there, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, Everything that he's going to be doing for his presidency is for his people, the Democratic people or the, or the Republican side. So not everybody wins anytime we put a president in that office. The whole country doesn't win as a whole. Just one side is going to be winning for the next four years or the next eight years. So it's very unfortunate what things are going on. But I wanted to share those quick aspects with you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section about everything that's going on. Why everybody's so mad? Why everybody's so focused on this presidency? What do you think's going to happen? And do you honestly believe if Trump didn't win this upcoming presidency, you think we'll go to a civil war? Because this country's been through a civil war once, even though it was a long time ago with some whole different ideologies. There's been a lot of internal conflict. There's been a lot of internal conflict and internal wars from within because of how our country can be so divided during different eras in the United States history. Could this be another one of those times? It's a genuine question I wanted to ask you guys. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.